What's happening guys, it's Shane here. So a lot of my viewers are young, really smart, intelligent people who wanna make really good educated decisions about their future. How the hell do you know that? Because I'm a genius. And one of the most important decisions you're ever gonna make is where you go to college. I'm 30 years old. None of us are enrolled in the college. Now, there are a lot of factors that go into choosing your college, but most people make the decision based off of emotional reasons, like their favorite basketball team is there. <clears throat> Darius! I want you all over that ball like a fat kid on a cupcake. Or it's just the college that's the closest to them and it's the most convenient. Or maybe it's the college that their parents want them to go to. I got it! Or something like that. And honestly, I can see why people make decisions like this. I mean, you're very young. This is one of the biggest decisions you're ever gonna make. And you probably haven't made that many big choices in your life at this point. But this is a serious decision that is definitely going to impact your financial and overall future. The truth is there are some universities that are gonna open doors for you and give you opportunities that other universities simply cannot compete with. And this is something that's very important for you to consider before you make your choice. And in this video, I'm gonna go over the universities that are most likely to help you become a millionaire. And at the end as a bonus, I'm gonna talk about the three most important factors that you need to consider when making your decision on what university you should attend. Now, before I get into this, I am gonna mention the study that was done here was studying what's known as ultra high net worth individuals, which is people that have over $30 million. <laughs> So with that being said, number 10 on the list is going to be the University of Chicago, which has churned out over 2,400 ultra high net worth individuals with a total net worth of $700 billion. <gasps> Now this doesn't really surprise me. It's a really well-respected university. It's like Ivy League level. Whenever somebody hears of that, they really respect it. But I was a little bit surprised that it made it into the top 10. Number nine on the list is going to be the University of Southern California with 2,645 ultra high net worth individuals and a total net worth of $548 billion. Now this one does actually surprise me a little bit. Surprise because USC is pretty well known in California, but it's not exactly like an Ivy League level university. But there are a lot of very, very rich people that move to the LA area, so they probably send their kids there and then maybe their kids end up inheriting the money. Transfer two million to my Swiss account. And then there's also some big industries there, like the film industry with Hollywood. The next one on the list, number eight, is going to be Northwestern University, and they have a grand whopping total of 2,700 ultra high net worth individuals. Now, the total net worth drops a little bit at about $389 billion, but this is still incredibly impressive, and honestly, I did not see Northwestern University making it on this list. That one totally came out of nowhere. Yeah! So that's why it's worth it to you know do this research and look this stuff up because you might be really surprised. Now the next one on the list, number seven, is the only university outside of the United States that made it on the list, and that is the University of Cambridge. Now they're in the United Kingdom and they have 2,760 ultra high net worth individuals. And there's a total net worth of about $390 billion, so it just edges out Northwestern. The next one on the list is MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and they have about 2,800 ultra high net worth individuals, which is just crazy, and 990 billion dollars of total net worth. Now this one doesn't surprise me because technically I think MIT is actually the number one university in the entire world. Wow even though they're probably not quite as well known as Harvard or Stanford, they actually beat them when it comes to academics. New York University is the next one on the list and they have 3,300 ultra high net worth individuals. And it drops down a little bit with a total net worth of 712 billion. Now again, this one doesn't surprise me too much. New York University is pretty well known, but I'm honestly surprised they've made it into the uh, top five. I thought they might be top 20 or top 15, maybe top 10. This is what you do to haters you just smile the top five is actually pretty impressive for them now the next one on the list jumps up quite a bit and that is columbia university at 3900 ultra high net worth individuals and this is a little bit of a tongue twister because it jumps up to twice of what New York University was, $1,500 billion of net worth, which is $1.5 trillion. That's just crazy. 
but not as crazy as the next one on the list, number three, which is the University of Pennsylvania. And they have 5,500 ultra high net worth individuals and a total net worth of $1.8 trillion. Now this one doesn't surprise me at all because they have the number one business school in the entire world. That's Wharton School of Business. And so they've got a lot of really business savvy people going there. I think Elon Musk even attended University of Pennsylvania and he's maybe the best entrepreneur of all time. But number two on the list is one of my favorite universities, which is Stanford. And they have 5,500 ultra high net worth individuals and $2.9 trillion of net worth. Now, Stanford is probably the second most well-known university, maybe the second most respected university in the entire world, and especially on the West Coast. So this one doesn't surprise me at all. And it's also right next to Silicon Valley, San Jose, all these different places that are in the middle of the technology hub of the world, basically. And so a lot of people who graduate from Stanford end up becoming millionaires from technology and software. And the faculty loves them. So this one definitely doesn't surprise me. In fact, I'm honestly a little bit surprised that Stanford isn't number one. But when I saw the statistics for number one, they absolutely blow everybody else out of the water and it's not even close. Number one is Harvard and they have 13,500 ultra high net worth individuals and a net worth of $4.8 trillion. Harvard totally blows everybody else out on the list. In fact, they're almost as much as everybody else combined on the list. It's just totally crazy. And again, I'm not super surprised by this. I am a little bit surprised that they beat out Stanford, but I figured Harvard would be top three for sure. We wasted the good surprise on you. All right. Because they're probably the most respected university in the entire world. Now, as promised, the three most important factors to consider when you're trying to decide which university you're gonna spend the next four years of your life at are number one, reputation of your university. And by this, I mean the university university's overall reputation. And then also you want to consider their reputation in a chosen field. So, you know, if you have the opportunity to go to a really well-known university like Stanford, Harvard, Princeton, Yale, something like that, everybody knows who they are. They have a great reputation. It doesn't really matter where you go. You're going to have a lot of opportunities. However, you'd be really surprised at random fields, how these random universities will be number one or in the top 10 in whatever degree you happen to be choosing. And so in that very small world, in that degree, and the people who graduate with that degree, that university is like the Harvard of that degree. So an example of this is in the pharmacy world, people who get their PharmDs, the University of San Francisco is probably the number one university out of any of them in the entire world. And so if you go to the University of San Francisco and you get a pharmacy degree, that's almost like going to Stanford or Harvard for something else. So reputation and whatever you're chosen degree is, is definitely something that you want to consider. The second thing you want to think a lot about is the alumni network. You know, you want to think, is your alumni network going to help you in your career? Are they going to help you get jobs? Or are they just going to pester you and send you emails and letters asking you and begging you to donate money to them? Gotcha, suckers. Now, some alumni networks are amazing anywhere. And examples of this would be like, you know, Stanford, Princeton, Harvard, really doesn't matter where you go. You're gonna have a lot of opportunities if you went to that school. However, most alumni networks are area specific. So an example of this would be USC has a great alumni network if you're in the Southern California area. And then Texas A&M has an amazing alumni network if you're in Texas. However, if you go to Texas A&M and then you move to Florida, the alumni network is probably not going to be anywhere near as good. Number three on this list is going to be cost. And overall, if you can get into a top 10 school for whatever degree you're going to get, or if you can get into a school that has a lot of clout like Stanford, Harvard, etc., it's usually worth it to go for that. But if you aren't able to get into those schools, your best bet is probably just to go the cheapest possible route. And the best way to do this is to take as many classes as you can in high school, get them out of the way, then go to a 
a really cheap community college. Just a very small college. Uh -huh. Tiny college. Do your first two years in community college and then transfer to a reasonably priced in-state school or transfer to a school that gives you the best scholarships. And the reason that I say a state school is because generally state schools get funding from the state and the government and so they tend to be cheaper. Just make sure that you go to a reputable university, an established university. Never go to a for-profit school and I really don't recommend going to non-profit schools either because even though it says non-profit, that doesn't mean that the president of the school can't make a million or two million dollars a year. They still pretty much treat it like a business and it's still very expensive in a lot of cases. So don't go to any of those degree mill for-profit schools, especially the online ones. And then just make sure you go to a cheap school and then get a degree that is going to actually land you a job and you'll be just fine. Next, go ahead and check out these videos right here. I made them just for you. Then go ahead and smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the little notification bell, comment down below any ideas you have about this video or any future videos you want me to make. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next video.